what a perfect song for the theme today, which is the call of the heart, which is part of the overarching theme for the month, which is the journey of compassion. We need to have the call of the heart listened to to get our start on that journey of compassion. And it's not by accident I wore the colors I wore today. Red and blue, because they go together. And our world has gotten so polarized in so many ways that we forget that we're all one. But there's also a little heart light right here to remind us that in order to get together, we've got to listen to our heart. Because we've got, you know, this human tribe we live in, now we're spiritual beings first and foremost, of course, and we come here to be human, to have these experiences, to teach us how to grow and evolve and become closer to God and goodness and love and all that. But this human tribe is so good at being relentlessly stubborn. We are, we're really, really good at it. We love to pull things apart when life just really wants to bring us together. We're so good at wanting to separate the light and the dark, the pain and the suffering, when truly, when those two things can meld together. I know for all of you, you've all felt each thing, the joy and the pain. We want to separate them, the light and the dark, but when we meld them together, that's when we find the depth of being when we can understand in a greater way. And we want to we wanna separate beauty and suffering. Oh, that's awful. Oh, that's wonderful. When it's actually beauty that will soften the suffering. We're so good at doing that. And I think the world is telling us right now because a lot of people right now are living in fear. Wherever you are, whatever your beliefs are, living in fear that some of your freedoms in life will be taken away. Because we have a worldwide pandemic going on. We have an extremely po polarized political atmosphere. We have, oh, disastrous results of climate change and experiences going on. And social protests and unrest that are just blossoming up. And we feel afraid. But you know what? I love what Joseph Campbell said because I keep, <laughs> it's actually fun to say, the world is a mess. You know, it's actually kind of fun to say because it's true. We say, oh my God, the world is the biggest mess it's ever been. Well, actually what Joseph, Joseph Campbell says, which I agree with, and if you, we look at history, the world has always been a mess. It's always been a mess. That's the human experience. We come here for the joys and the sorrows, but suffering only lasts for a while. It's the joy that we learn to cultivate and develop within ourselves that lasts forever. It endures. It endures. But Campbell goes on to say, yeah, so the world is a mess. It's always going to be a mess. So if we think we're going to change it, the only thing we can really change is ourselves. That's the only thing we can change. We don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are as we are. That's why two people can look at one painting and have such a different experience of it, or watch a movie and have a different meaning come from it, or be living very similar lives and have a very different experience. So today, it's important, the call of the heart. And you know, we give, when, when Mary, when you were reading that wonderful Reading, I think it's Edward Villon, which is very hard to say. I've practiced for years, believe me, because, but um, yes, when we get our minds caught up in the noise of the world, all that noise pollution in the world, do you know what I'm talking about, the noise pollution? Then it becomes, becomes mind pollution, and it becomes habitual habits and patterns that we start seeing the world in a negative, separate, disastrous way. We've got to start. What Ernest Holmes says is imperative that our heart and our mind, our, our heart, see, heart and mind, our mind, no, wait, wait, our heart and mind cooperate and work together because our heart wants to be heard. And we can build up walls of resistance around our heart. We're very good at that. 
could be guilt, shame, unworthiness, anger, hatred, jealousy, all that. We can build walls of resistance. So that actually affects the noise going on in our mind. But the heart, the heart wants to be heard because that's where God speaks to us, is in the heart. God speaks to us in a, in a language of feeling and how you know, as Mary said so beautifully, it's always affirmative. If you want to know if God's speaking to you, it's always going to be affirmative because God is infinitely good. And it's going to be a, a feeling or an understanding of wisdom, of understanding. It's that voice that says, I know you're tired. I know it. But come, this is the way. That's the voice of God. Understanding, loving, caring, compassionate. You know, there's a story in the Science of Mind magazine that really, um, really meant a lot to me. I'd like to share it because I think it talks a lot about what's going on in the world today. We've really desensitized ourselves to not realizing the suffering that's going on. I don't care if you're rich or poor or anywhere in the b between, black or white or anywhere in between, young or old or anywhere in the in between. Suffering, pain is part of the human experience. It happens to all of us. And we need to get more available to understand and be there for one another. Before I tell you the story, and I probably wasn't going to say this until a little, a little later, but I just, I read this and I just, it made me feel, oh, I don't know, it made me feel good. The Buddhists and their bodhisattva, the awakened heart, the first step in the awakened heart is to free ourselves of anything that keeps us from helping one another. Okay, now I'm going to tell you a little story and then we'll talk about that again if I remember. And if I don't, we won't. Um, so the story, the story is just a parable, a modern parable, about a man and his two sons who get on a cramped city bus. And they get on the bus and look, and the available seats are way in the back, so they go and sit down. And soon, when the bus starts, the kids start running up and down the aisle, screaming, and the man's just sitting there stoically, looking totally unconcerned. And I think we've all been in a place like that, in a restaurant or somewhere, and there's just something going on, and we don't know what, oh, we start, all of a sudden people started to kind of turn it around, and begrudgingly looking at the man like, would you do something about this? And it went on and on until they got to the man and his children's stop. And of course the kids tore down the aisle to get off the bus. And before the man stepped out, he turned around and looked at the people on the bus and said, Please forgive my children. We've just left the hospital where their mother died, and they don't know yet how to deal with their feelings. And one of the men said, oh, I totally understand, friend. My brother recently passed away unexpectedly, and I took care of his children for a while, and I felt their pain, and I too didn't know what to do with that. And then an elderly woman got up and took the man's hand and said, I too understand. I lost my husband of 60 years recently. And I can feel the depth of pain that you're living through and what life has dealt for you and your children now. I know no words can make it better. But I just want you to know you're not alone. That's the heart speaking. That's the compassion. We don't know what kind of beliefs this man had or where he came from or where the kids came from. We don't know what either party, did, but compassion brings us together. When you answer the call of the heart, you reach your hand out in understanding and love. Now, the question is, do we have that same kind of compassion? Have we healed our own selves enough to be able to do that kind of work? You know, Ernest Holmes said, it's a terrible burden to be critical. Terrible. It weighs on the heart and mind to be critical and judgmental. There's no room. Ernest Holmes was dead set on saying there's no room for hatred. You don't have to like everybody, but there's no room for hatred in our world. 
And he went on to say, at night, at night, you should never, ever, 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 he didn't use all those evers, but I am, you should never, ever, ever go to bed until you've cleared up all the animosity in your heart and mind. And then you can go to bed. And then you can do your soul's work. And then you can be freed if you're willing to do that. Yes, the heart wants to speak, and we need to listen. And the easiest way to let the heart speak is through thoughts of love and compassion. That's the easiest way to get ourselves, oh, but how do we do that? When we're really down and afraid and feeling beat up, how, do we abs how can we possibly move from this place of fear or disappointment or upset to a place of understanding? How can we get there? Let me tell you, when I talk about the mind and the heart having a conversation that they need to communicate, we need to always have an ongoing conversation, ongoing, this is probably a daily conversation, between our disappointment, our frustrations, our fears, our angers, a conversation between that and the possibilities and the miracles and the faith and the love that's there. I just give you that thought, an ongoing conversation. Okay, well, yes, yeah, so we own. So to be, you know, oftentimes, to really get that to that place of compassion, you heard the people that stepped up on the bus. They had to be broken open and had their, have their own experience first and own that experience and say, yes, this was tough and hard and difficult in, in, a, in order for them to reach out to someone else. But this isn't just recent. Um, Hafez, you know, all the mystics understand the power of compassion and the power of the heart. They all get it, just as I said in Buddhism, the awakened heart, the first step to an awakened heart is to free ourselves of anything that keeps us from helping one another. Hafez said, it is unanimous from where I come that everyone agrees on one thing, just one thing everybody agrees on, it's no fun when God is not near just not fun. So listen, the beloved has agreed to play a game called love. The wise man learn what draws God near. It is the beauty of compassion in the heart. That's what draws God near. Because God speaks to the heart. If I asked you, where do you find God? I bet most of us would put, go right here. This is where I find God, or out here, here, both. But here is where we draw it in. This is way, that's why we have to listen to the call of our heart before anything else. We have to be able to reach out and understand. So I asked you if you'd be able to have the same compassion that the woman, the elderly woman on the bus had. Because, again, we don't see the world as it is. We don't see the world. We see the world as we are. And what Ernest Holmes said about um, criticism, he said when we're criticizing people, when we're judging people, when we're looking out there and condemning people, it's because we haven't dealt with something in our own hearts. There's something else that wants to be heard inside us that's wanting us to love, to forgive, to understand who we are, to forgive ourselves because we can't give life what we don't have. So that's the call for today. Here's an, and it went further back to the Bible. I love this. The Bible in Proverbs 27, uh, 19 says, just as water reflects the face, just as water reflects the face, one human heart reflects another. When we heal, when we understand, when we bring ourselves together, you and I, and so start sharing that love, that understanding, that healing that we've done for ourselves. We can start sharing that with each other. So, if you look out in the world today, where do you see yourself in that picture? Because you know, the way we're designed, we're each this unique expression of spirit, of God, of goodness. We each have that heart light, that we each have an essence of goodness and love within us that wants to shine when we let it. But we're designed uniquely. So we really, this whole tapestry of the world, this whole puzzle piece of this thing we call life, there's a place for each one of us in that puzzle. 
We have to find our place. But if we don't understand that we're all in this together, because remember, when we listen to our heart, it calls us together, not apart. So what I'm asking for today, this is my call to action for all of us, is to leave here with the intention to have a new mindset, an intention. Because we remember if the heart and mind are communicating and we're the ones out there and we're spreading out an energy, a little vibration, I want you to set that mindset, heart set, mindset to peace. These are the ones I picked for myself. So you can choose your own, but I kind of like these. They're the PPP. Peace, patience, and possibility. That's where I'm setting my mind, into the peace, patience, and possibility of the world. That I can step out and emanate and express and be that now. So I'd like to end right now with a prayer. So if you'll just put your feet flat on the floor. Whatever you carried in this morning, whatever concern I heard today that you know, three out of four people right now are living in fear of what they're going to lose because of our life right now, what's happening. And we want to deal with that fear by doing what we know how to do, and that's pray. And that's connect with God and open our hearts and our awareness and our understanding that right here where we sit, that supreme power, that infinite being that we call God and love and goodness, divine love, is everywhere present equally for everyone, always. And in understanding that love is always present for everyone, not to some and not others, but to all of us all the time, we can open up and be a vessel and vehicle to accept the love, the goodness, the kindness, the joy, the peace, the understanding, the availability, the prosperity that is waiting for us right now. God's there. God's available always. We need to do the work and open ourselves up to be that vessel and vehicle to share the light and love and goodness, the heart light, the light that is built within us that's always there. We need to feed it right now with the joy that wants to express from us an understanding that we give life meaning. We make life what it is. Let's plant right now in this moment in our heart mind, in our mind mind, let's plant the seeds of goodness, connection, compassion, and joy. Let's take a breath and just fill ourselves with the aliveness that we've been given in this gift of life. The aliveness that God is. We are. And we are here to express, to express it, to connect with it, to be it. Ah, oh, to let it flow right here and right now. And I know in this moment, I see in this moment in my, in my mind's eye that as we open up to this infinite supreme power of goodness, that as we allow it to flow through us all, the fear, all the anger, all the upset in this moment, as we just let this goodness flow, Absolutely, it is just, it really is released right here and right now as it is transmuted into an understanding of the miracle and joy of life that we have been given. We accept this life exactly as it is, the messiness and the joy, the beauty and the suffering, because all of it is part of this beautiful life that we live, and we are an integral and important part of it. Just in that knowing, I release that understanding, that awareness right now to this infinite mind of goodness that only knows to say yes. I'm grateful for that right now. And I just say thank you, God, for this and so much more. And together, let's seal that by saying, and so it is. And I thank God for all of you. God bless you all. Thank you for being here.